The uh, Port Canaveral Inlet was created between 1950 and 1953 when the channel was dug and rock jetties were placed on both sides. Within about 45 years, by the early 1990s, uh, sand had built up so that the beach was about a thousand feet wider on the north side of the inlet along the Air Force Station and had eroded by over 500 feet along Jetty Park. That erosion spread and extended 10, 15 miles south of the inlet. So by 1992, there was about a 1,500 foot horizontal offset of the shoreline between the north side and the south side of the inlet. The inlet management plan uh, allowed for the uh, reconstruction of jetties on both sides of the inlet um, to make them longer and taller in order to keep the sand on the beaches and not falling into the inlet where it was then dredged and dumped offshore. The plan also stipulated that sand, good quality sand that is dredged from the channel that does fall in, would be restored and placed to the nearshore seabed and not dumped offshore. Finally, the plan um, required that sand be moved by a dredge from north to south across the inlet using a dredge and a temporary pipeline that's placed along the bottom of the ship channel in order that sand can be moved from the shoreline north of the inlet, pumped through the pipeline and deposited on the beaches to the south side of the inlet. It also includes an extensive physical and biological monitoring program. So we look to see where is the sand moving? Are we keeping up with the amount of sand that builds up on one side and erodes on the other? Where should the sand be placed along the shoreline in order to optimize the benefits we get from all of this mechanical sand movement? And are these efforts successful in terms of creating habitat for the environment, including especially marine turtle, uh, marine turtle nesting? Beach management in Brevard County is the result of a complex and dedicated cooperation between a lot of different agencies the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Florida uh, Department of Environmental Protection, the Canaveral Port Authority, Brevard County, the Space Coast Tourist Development Council, the U.S. Air Force, and the local cities. Particularly in the 1990s, all of these entities got together to create what is now the Brevard County Shore Protection Project and the Port Canaveral Inlet Management Plan. First it started with a volunteer day where we had a couple thousand foot of wooden sand fencing and volunteers from the city of Cape Canaveral came out on a Saturday and under the leadership of some people from the Canaveral Port Authority installed the uh, sand fencing in eight foot sections and then planted uh, little baby sea oats along that area. It was such a big success that the port and the city of Cape Canaveral expanded it the next year, added like another five or 6,000 feet of sand fencing. And then the county and the city of Cape Canaveral with volunteers came in and installed more little baby sea oats along the sand fencing thereafter. Very quickly with the windblown sand caught by the sea oats and the fencing, all of these dunes developed, all the dunes that you see from here southward down into the city of Cocoa Beach. The improvement to the jetties was key to keeping sand on the beaches, but with, with large scale storms, sand can still be driven around the jetties and fall into the inlet channel, such as in 2004, when we had large shoaling come in after hurricanes Jeannie and Francis uh, in the late part of the summer. So in order to keep the, the channel open and to keep the sand in a place we can get to it, the port of its own accord dredged a trap that is a deepened area on the south side of the inlet channel so that when sand does sneak around that jetty it falls into this deepened area where we can then dredge it out separately from all of the silts and clays and place it in a nearshore area about 20 feet of water just offshore of Cocoa Beach. Eventually that sand can then work its way back onto the beach. One of the biggest challenges the port faced in the late 1980s and 1990s was mitigating the effect of the Federal Navigation Channel upon the adjacent beaches. It was quite evident that the channel was responsible for large amounts of beach erosion extending 10, 12, 15 miles down the coastline, but no one was really willing to step up and do anything about it. The Canaveral Port Authority uh, took up the charge of mitigating these effects. In partnership with Brevard County and the state, it developed this management plan uh, and um, 
persuaded the federal government to take on the sand bypassing project, the reconstruction of its jetties, a massive undertaking in order to restore the beaches associated with the inlet and make sure that the beach erosion did not occur into the future. It was one of the most challenging inlet problems that I've ever worked on and it remains one of the most successful inlet management programs throughout the world.